There we go. So that's being recorded. And with all these webinars, of course, you know, if you can't make it on the time on the day, do um, register anyway, and then I can send you a copy of the recording as a link. Um, I know you're all here, so it's pointless telling you this, but uh, you, you'll get the gist. But yeah, if, if you do register, I always make that point because then I've got a list of who to send to rather than just blanket sending to everybody. So welcome along. Thank you for coming. Um, my webinar today, I'm Kath, by the way, if you haven't uh, virtually met me before, I recognise a few names actually. So it's nice to see you all. Uh, we're going to look at Ingenious, which is the breeding data on herd companion. So without further ado, it's best if I show you what I'm talking about. Let's share my screen. OK, so what we have, I start at the beginning into Herd Companion. Everybody on full recording will have access to this information. So it's a really useful tool to see um, the range of PLIs across your herd. Um, what different values are in there, which which are the strengths within that PLI section, and also to actually sort your herd into different breeding groups. So it doesn't require any genomic testing at all. It is enhanced through genomic testing, as we'll see in a minute. But if you wanted to start off with the, you know, the standard PLIs that are available to anybody doing a full milk recording service, this is the place to go. And it's all available to you through Herd Companion. So we have a breeding and fertility section up here and then we just go to the left and it's these three that I'm going to be talking about today. Um, so that encompasses the ingenious banner, if you like. Um, I also want to draw your attention to the AHDB link as well, where you can drill down even further. There's things like SCI on there, um, but the ones through that through her companion are here. So herd status we're going to start with. <clears throat> little teams thing out of the way there we go and this is then it's, it's quite handy because especially if you're presenting it tells you what you're looking at on the on the writing but we've got the average pli for the herd so this is just cows at this stage um, as a number in the middle and then this this quite dynamic pie chart um, donut i think it might be called which gives you the breakdown so of all the aspects of that pli you can see these different ones here they're all color coded and gives you a comparison <clears throat> of where you sit in relation to the top 25%. So orange stands out here quite well, lifespan, this herd, so this is Hartbury University as we use for all of our demos. This is in the top 25% for lifespan, um, in the sort of bottom 50% for other health, which is interesting. Uh, the three production ones, they are slightly different shades of blue and you can just hover the mouse over to see what they are. So you've got fat, You've got milk and you've got protein there. So already quite interesting into how that's that's broken down. And then we have this reliability graph over here to show um, again as a benchmark. That's your red line in terms of a typical curve here. So age of the cow and then percentage reliability. And the blue line is what your herd is doing. Now you can see some of these have interestingly skyrocketed. So we've possibly got you know, more reliability here at 12 months old. That to me is genomic testing. So we've we've enhanced the reliability figure straight off there. May have tested a few animals at that age. Then we're back down to sort of, you know, pretty much running along the curve for all of these ages. So of course this is age in months. So we're looking at a, you know, a five-year-old cow at this stage here. Um, and then we've got another little peak on there. Now, I just want to come out of here a second just to give you a comparison. I'll just minimise this one a moment. Oh, hang on, that's my calendar. I don't want to see that. Uh, we have, I've got a screenshot here somewhere. There we go. This one is a different herd uh, that does genomic testing. So you can see straight away, as soon as they test those young heifers, We've got a fantastic graph here, slight dip in the middle, but, you know, overall they're doing an awful lot of genomic testing here. So straight away, your reliability um, doubles for all those PLI values. So it just gives you an idea of, of what it can do and what it can look like. Let's come back out of there. Um, as with all these things, if you have any questions, I should have said this at the start, do pop it in the chat if you want to, or we can come to those at the end uh, in any case. So that's our first thing. So what's our herd average PLI for the cows and what is our reliability looking like? If we then move across to genetic progress.
So what's our PLI been up to over time? So based on birth date, so we've got older cows here and then right through to, you know, year old heifers at this end. Now, you would expect ideally that things will naturally improve. So we've got quite a nice, um, you know, linear curve going on there. So that's our, our PLI values. And there's also a trend line. So that's what the little box next two is like you just make it as a straight line you can see yep definite improvement on age and again with all of these graphs you can hover over to get the actual values for a certain age category and then what I found interesting on this one I just looked at the milk so you can plot over the top in fact if I get rid of those just a second so we can concentrate on one thing at a time so within that PLI the milk value takes a bit of a tumble here minus 100 uh, and then I put on fertility index and that one has risen so interesting to see that you know for the benefit of fertility we've dropped milk yield slightly in terms of PLI again so um, whether there's something going on with that particular you know set of cows that age category something like that but it's it's right at itself and now we're yeah we're really flying on the fertility side um, and the milk as well you know has has improved since then as well. So you can sort of mix and match, you know, plot on everything if you want to see um, how the how the different aspects compare, really. Um, comparing, always useful, always interesting to benchmark, isn't it? If we look at national comparison, we can see where we fit, where this herd fits compared to the national figures. So this loads a table. It's got a same similar graph as the one we saw right at the start exactly the same values but they're just split into 10 segments so centiles here rather than the four um, quartiles and again you know we've got superb lifespan right through to the top 10 percent and a bit less so on the on the other health one you know 50 as we saw before uh, this graph this table here then gives us where you sit for each of those segments again. So overall PLI, ours was 116. We're in that top 10% bracket. Um, and we can see the different values there here as well. Compared to Holstein standard cows. Now that's always the default, um, but we haven't forgotten all of our Channel Island breeds or other breeds at all. So you can actually view, you know, your first lactation heifers. And just let it refresh a second, then your figures alter slightly. So you can see down here, yeah, this table's now changed. How many animals we're looking at? So this is our heifers now, average PLI of those, 209. And we're still, you know, pretty much up there. Um, again, a bit lower down on the SCC element. Or we can look at other other age brackets as well. And you'll see on here, I'll just go down the whole list. We've got Shorthorn, we've got Ayrshire, Jersey, Guernsey. British Friesian, Brown Swiss and Montbelliard. So hopefully you can find the breed relevant to you and then you've got a like for like comparison. If we then move to the spread one, now this will populate straight away. If it doesn't populate and you've never been in here in your life before, um, don't panic. What you have to do is just go into the animal evaluation screen and then come back out into here and it will populate this graph. It's basically just uh, reviewing these groups which we will come on to in a second, but it's just kind of uh, yeah, a funny way around of doing it. But as I say, once you've done that once, it will remember. So this is just looking at the spread of PLI within the herd. So we know our average, um, and I'm on 65 animals for some reason. I can, yeah, let's put this back to cows. Uh, under cows, there we are, couldn't see it for looking. Well, let's just refresh that again. There we go. And then the spread. So 65 cows. OK, we'll sort that in a minute. So we can see um, as an average where we are. Yes, always a useful figure. But actually, what is the spread? What is the range within the herd for that PLI value? So we've got, you know, our count here. This is just one cow that's down here at, um, you know, 60 odd couple of cows there. It's not quite a bell shaped curve, is it? We've got different levels at, at different places there. And we can also then view that again for those same um, aspects of the PLI, as well as things like TB advantages in here as well. So with the cell count one, we know we're pretty low on that. We can see then the range, which is quite a broad spread, generally speaking, isn't it?
and then we'll just try the milk one which looks yeah again quite a wide variety i still don't know why i've got 65 there but i have been playing with this for a bit this morning just to make sure it all works for you so yeah so what's the range within our herd then we can move on to the animal evaluation now this is the fun bit so we can actually plot all of our cows individually and see how they are evaluated um, for each breeding group. Now, again, when you first come in here, you'll have a, an evenly split herd. So there's a green, an amber and a red, usually then split exactly three ways, so 33 and a third percent per group. When you first see this, you might think, goodness me, what on earth are all these numbers? So let me attempt to explain that to you. Firstly, which animals do we want to view? So animals selected for analysis is here. There are 288 in the entire herd. So if you only want to view cows, you can you know, filter those out here. Or if you just want to view your heifers, same applies. And you can then split it by breed as well. So I'm going to go with everything for now. We then have what we call these sliders. So it defaults to PLI to start with. So we're only looking at that one thing and maybe start with that one for the for the first instance. Talk to your breeding advisor about this, you know, have a good discussion and, and use this tool together. I would absolutely encourage that 100 percent. So or, you know, if you know that you want to concentrate on fertility and maybe, you know, boost certain aspects of it up, you can you can tick all of these if you want to. Um, but I think for the first instance, we'll just look at PLI. So what do these numbers all mean? So the range of PLI within this herd is from minus 208 right through to 504. So quite a wide range, really. We then have these other numbers here. So basically our herd as it currently stands, and this has been you know, tweaked with various times, is, is it's the same as our demo herd ultimately. So in the red group currently, we have a range of minus 208 to plus 10. So that's indicated by this slider here. Then we've got our yellow group from 10 to 275. And then the green group, 275 to 504. So you can actually move these sliders along either with the mouse until you get to a cutoff value that's, that's suitable. Or if I just click on there, I can actually use my arrow key. So if you want to be really precise, you can see that counts down to exact figures so I can get it to whatever I want and then likewise with this one I've moved it along too far I could maybe move it back up again to here now in terms of what these three groups mean that's entirely up to you it could be that your green group which is the highest ones are going to be top end to sex semen something like that uh, it might be that the red group you know whatever your cutoffs are you move to or you serve to beef so it's entirely you know whatever breeding plan you've got Again, talk to your advisor. They can they can um, help you with those sort of decisions. But it gives you an idea of of the ranges as well and the numbers of cows also. So even if you pick your figures out here, looking at this group, you know, this is 66 percent of the herd, um, 178 cows that equates to. So possibly it's, it's too many in that group. It's not going to physically, obviously not physically move them. It's not going to put them into any different groups as far as your milk records go. There is an element of that in herd companion as a genetic breeding group, which we will see in a second. OK, but it's purely just for this section, really. So once we've moved our sliders to the desired areas. Next step is apply slider changes to grid. Now I haven't done anything too drastic here, so you won't see anything obvious happen particularly, but press that button in any case. You know you've pressed it because we've now got save selections highlighted. So slider, this is your slider, changes to grid, this is the grid down here. So it's a standard table, as with anything in her companion, just looks slightly different to all the other ones, but it works in exactly the same way. So, you know, all the latest recording results, all that sort of thing. These are in PLI order descending. So we can see with our little arrow here. So our top heifer in this herd is 5840 with a PLI of 504. And then you've got all her other values in there as well. These, therefore, are all in the green group, our group number one. And like with any other table, we can, you know, make it bigger. If I want 50 cows as a great big long list or maybe everybody all together, you can change those. And the purpose of this grid, you might want to find an animal. Again, don't go scrolling through um, heaps of pages that there she is. We found the animal we wanted to see. 
And it might be for whatever reason, individually, she doesn't quite fit in that green breeding group for whatever your criteria are. You can actually then change it and put her into group two. Conversely, if I take that out again, refresh. Oh, hang on. Let's come back a bit. There we go. So there's the one I've moved manually. I could go through the whole herd and say, well, do you know what? She's going to be a barren cow. I'm going to put her into group three, even though her PLI is high. So there could be, you know, all kind of subjective reasons for this, these changes. So you can go through, make adjustments equally. If I go to, say, page five, you know, this is our bottom end. Oh, and then we've got borderline cows as well. So we could move these ones up a bit or we could move the red ones into group two. You know, you can pick and choose individually. Um, you don't have to spend ages and ages on that. This is the whole point of, you know, what PLI is for and to make these decisions based on those those credible values. If you have made any changes here, apply grid changes to pie chart. And if you look at the pie chart now, as I do this, it will ever so slightly change. But you can't even see it because I didn't do that many changes, but that's what it's doing. It's now applying those changes of group category for each of those individuals to the pie chart up here. And then if I save selections, always save your work as you go, particularly if you've painstakingly moved your sliders. If you want to start again, you can reset all. OK, so we've made our changes there. We're happy with which cows are in which group and proportion wise, that's fine. Now we go to animal summary. And we can see the breakdown of of our ranges, really. So group one has got 54 cows in it. This is the average of that group, reliability of that group, and so on. We have some animals with no group at all. Those um, may have bits of data missing. They may be, um, you know, certain estimates as well, but they, there's possibly worth having a look at those to see, you know, um, if there's a sire not quite identified or something like that, then we haven't got, you know, the estimated PLIs if it's a youngster that kind of um, example. So check those out as well. That's your summary. And then this is our group um, or list of cows, really list of animals. So again, all 288 are in here with the option to filter as well. So this is in line number order. These are blue, so you can actually check out an individual cow and go to her record if you need to. You can look up a cow just the same with the filter here. And we can see then their individual PLI values again. So if I wanted to look at all the 54 cows that are in group one, I could just filter out that way. There we go. And we can see if we've got an E here, this is an estimated PLI. And what I'm also looking for, I think we have got a few because we did see evidence of genomic testing going on, but if I put a G in there, there we go. So these G's all indicate genomically tested cows as well, or heifers. OK, so just to, to um, you know, have a look at these wordings. So all the way through you do this, it does hopefully explain it as you go as to what you're what you're viewing. The no group section is populated by animals that either were not included in your selection criteria or do not have a PTA at all. Yeah, so it's all about, you know, what, what's the data showing us? Is there, is there credible data there to, to calculate these values? So. Um, having done all of that, let's filter that one out. It could have taken you quite a while to, you know, get the exact figures. So do export this grid either as a PDF or possibly a spreadsheet, and then you can maybe play about with the figures a bit more. But having made significant changes, do export as you go, because, um, well, generally speaking, it should be fine. But in case somebody else comes into her companion, you know, within your farm set and, um, you know, has a little tweak of those sliders, then your data will change accordingly in terms of the groupings anyway. It won't affect anything else, of course. So you can export what you've done and then maybe have a play and, and try it again with a different uh, format. And the final bit that this is now um, done. Now, this isn't going to look so good because we haven't got any um, cows to serve at the minute here. But if I go into I reports and cows to serve. We can then take this list with our appropriate genetic group decided. So I've just got the one example here, the block carving herd. They're all about to carve any minute. But we can see this particular cow is now in our genetic group, too. So that's the amber group that we've been looking at. Um, aside totally independent from any management groups that you might already have set up 
But now you can use these breeding lists to say, OK, breeding advisor, you know, these are our group ones. Which which sires do you recommend? That kind of thing. And again, you can filter out, look at group ones, look at the whole herd entirely. Um, just as a reminder, any printing, if you wanted to print this list off, or the, all the previous ones as well, um, with Chrome and Edge, there's no obvious print button, and we don't have one on her companion, but there's a three dotted button right at the top here. And then you've got the option to print. So that will print exactly as you see on screen give you a nice list. Um, but if it's easier, you can also export this table. And that one puts it straight into Excel in any case. So you've got that, you know, outside of of Herd Companion already formatted. So that's quite nice. So probably that's the way to go. And then you can always print from there if you need to. OK, um, so that's our ingenious section. Um, I did also just want to show you the YouTube site. So just webinars generally. Um, NMR has its has its own page here, channel, I should say. Um, you can search if you look for NMR dash National Milk Records or even you know National Milk, you should find it. Um, please do subscribe because all of our herd companion webinars, all the recordings end up in here. Um, I've even got a playlist with uh, this one here. I'm not going to play it right now, but um, you know they're all linked together. So all the previous ones that we've done are all in here looking at milk recording, bulk milk disease, drying off, and now we've got Ingenious as well. It's come out of there. So um, you can catch up and watch all of them play back at any time. OK, got a question. Uh, thank you very much. If you have a missing sign information on NMR, but you know the information, can this be added? Um, yes, it can through your recorder, basically. So um, there is data entry possible on Herd Companion, but not for that type of detail. So if you're missing a sire, you know, give it to NMR um, via your recorder or your area field manager and we can pop that in for you. Um, absolutely fine. And we do um, we do things like herd ancestry reports as well. So if you're feeling that you've got, um, you know, quite a bit of missing information or you just want us to go through it, maybe as a sort of a, a tidy up exercise, um, get in contact with your area field manager because the herd ancestry report we can generate uh, to show all the cows in the herd, the sire, the dam, you know, and, and pedigree information where applicable. So we can just make sure it's all really tidy and then, you know, you can you know view herd companion with all the all the relevant data. Great. Any other questions, anybody? Let's look at the Q&A as well. Q&A in the chat are generally very, very similar, aren't they, really? OK, so I hope that was useful for you. And um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the last in this little series of Her Companion, but we will be back to say the webinars are all available to view. And um, yeah, thank you all very much for coming. Have a good day.